I'm back again. I'm just going to do a tutorial today on um, some of my favourite essential items that are in my, my hair and makeup kit. Um, I thought I'd do this video because I first started watching uh, YouTube tutorials and trying to recreate the looks. Um, I didn't have a lot of these items and I thought that perhaps I could do without them or make do with stuff that I already had in my makeup kit. And the reality is that you kind of just can't, not if you want to get a really authentic look. So um, these are the, the items that I use every day to try and maintain my look um, and they just help my hair and my makeup stay longer um, without having constant touch-ups. And some of them are little cheat items and some of them are, are the real deal, kind of authentic, what you would have used back then as well. So um, here we go. First and foremost, um, a rat tail comb and I have spoken about this before um, you'll see it in my vintage uh, hot roller set tutorial um, a rat tail comb is important for a few reasons and it's really handy for a few reasons number one the end is really easy to use in terms of just splitting your hair up into different sections whether it's to roller or if it's just to do a particular hairstyle um, the 40s and the 50s was very much about a sleek perfect kind of created look and it's a lot easier to do that with a rat tail comb than it is with a big kind of chunky comb or with a brush or just fingers. Um, so that's really important and secondly if you're doing a hot roller set or even a sponge roller set um, it's worth spending the time learning how to use a rat tail comb to flick the ends of your hair into your sponge roller or your hot roller so that the ends end up on the inside of your curl. This is because when you're doing a set, um, if your ends are bent or tucked into the wrong place or end up hanging loose out of, out of your um, curl, you'll find that your set doesn't last as long or when you brush it out you have these weird kinks at the end of your hair and you just, you won't be happy with your set. So learning how to do that is really, really important to get not only an authentic look but just to make sure that you don't end up with sort of a funny outcome with your hairstyle. So I highly recommend doing that and you can see how to flick in and under in my hot roller tutorial. Um, continuing on with hair products, and this is a reasonably new one for me. I only came across this in the last 12 months, um, and that is a teasing brush. Now, a teasing brush, see like the bristles are slightly different to a, um, a normal hair brush. They've got like um, some shorter ones, some longer ones, and they crisscross in different directions to help zhuzh the hair into place. Um, and that is really handy if, like me, you've got very fine individual strands of hair, but a lot of hair on your head, and your hair's very slippery. I don't dye my hair, so I don't have that extra kind of um, texture to my hair that you get from, from dyeing it, and it dries it out a little bit, and that just helps it hold a tease better. Um, my hair is heavy and slippery, and so I tease, and within a few minutes it's, it's gone in with a lot of product um, and a lot of effort. This is phenomenal and makes my life so much easier, and I'd highly recommend it if you have problems teasing with just like a rat tail comb. Um, or a brush, give a teasing brush a go. And it has a rat tail end as well, so it's pretty handy to chuck in your bag and it kind of is a two-in-one tool. Um, next, and this is huge, and I didn't do this for a long time. I watched a whole bunch of, um, of vintage tutorials on how to set my hair in 40s and 50s and even 60s styles, and I was not using a setting lotion. And if you're having trouble, ladies, with your sets and they're not lasting, this is probably your problem. Um, sometimes you can cheat a little bit and use mousse, but I really think you need a good uh, setting lotion. Um, it doesn't have to be expensive. Try different ones out or ask people what they use for a vintage set and tell, tell the person that you're buying the product from that you want to do a vintage set. If they don't know what you're talking about, go somewhere else and ask someone that does because this is really essential. I, um, I'm vegan and I know vegans are forever telling you that they're vegan, joke away, but um, regardless of whether you're vegan or not, I think um, there's no reason to harm animals in the process of, of doing your hair and makeup. There are so many great vegan products and lines out there and a lot of them are mainstream, so um, I'm happy to let you know what those are. So, um, Di Lorenzo, mainstream brand you can get from Hair House Warehouse. They don't have a setting lotion, but this is a Stronghold Finishing Spray. Um, and 
uh, being being a wet spray what I do is I mix it like a tiny bit not very much like maybe a quarter of the bottle has gone into this bottle of um, water and I spray that on to wet my hair and then I do my hot roller and my pink curl sets and stuff from that and that works really well um, and continuing with the De Lorenzo range um, it is really really hard to get cruelty free hairspray which is kind of scary but if you look on the back of the bottles at supermarket you'll see none of them say um, we don't test on animals it's because they all test on animals which is really awful um, another essential item that I highly recommend getting whether it's De Lorenzo or not is a stronghold hairspray don't bother with light holes or flexi holes because when you do a vintage set and you've slept in your pink curls and you've done a wet set and washed it and spent hours preparing you don't want it to flex out of the curl uh, you want it to stay put so I recommend Stronghold Hairspray this is their Stronghold Granite Elements and it smells like cinnamon mm -hmm. I don't know that I should be sniffing out of a can but um, <laughs> it smells good so that's that um, get yourself a good hairspray um, and invest like spend a little bit of money on your hairspray because you don't want crunchy hair you don't want a product that's too heavy um, you want a good quality hairspray um, that's gonna also evenly cover your hair and not that doesn't have a crappy mechanism that's gonna like splurge out in one spot and not come out in another spot just spend a little bit of cash and get something good and the bottles are massive like compared to a supermarket bottle it's like twice the size so 20 bucks here or there whatever um, the next product that I'm going to show you that is really good and that again I kind of avoided getting for a long time because I thought it was a little bit unnecessary and I was wrong <laughs> is um, pomade now um, I use and I hope it's vegan the girl told me at the store that she was pretty sure that it was and I couldn't really find any info on it so if it's not please let me know but hopefully it is and for you um, for my fellow vegan vintage enthusiasts out there hopefully it's handy but this is um, NAC silk pomade um, and basically it's like a sticky gel um, not really a gel it's like a sticky jelly wax hard to explain but what it does is you put the tiniest little bit on your fingers um, after you've done a style or particularly if you've done teasing um, and you've done like a beehive or something and you want to smooth out the outer layers you put the tiniest amount like just drag your fingers over the product rub it over your hands and then just smooth down all of your flyaways um, it gives your hair a beautiful shine and if you are going to sleep in your in today's style and try and recreate it tomorrow when you brush your hair it gives your hair that a beautiful silkiness and it helps you keep your style um, next uh, and every every vintage enthusiast should have this like if you're getting into the vintage thing or you think you're a vintage enthusiast and you don't know how to pin curl you need to learn how to pin curl like pin curling is the foundation of every vintage hairstyle from the 1920s right through the 1960s um, it's the foundation of a, of a victory roll um, and some of just your finishing details with your updos where you just want to do like little loops and things it all it starts with a pink curl get yourself a big collection of um, of pink curls of pink curl clips rather um, and they're great when you're setting um, and they're better than bobby pins in my opinion because um, they're flat see how they've got no ripple in them right and they're very easy they've got a great mechanism that's very easy to use again spend the money on some decent ones um, so they don't break on you and they're sturdy and they'll stay in um, being flat they're a bit more comfortable to sleep on and because they don't have the ripple in them like a bobby pin does they don't kink your curl so if you've done pin curls on your head and you're putting bobby pins in crosswise like you'll often see um, sometimes when you take your curl out you'll find your hair's got like a crinkle effect to it because of the ripples in the um, in the bobby pin obviously you won't get those with a pin curl clip that's why they were invented um, so get those and they're great like when you want to do things like I've done here today if you pin your hair into place with your pin curl clips and then spray you can get like s waves and stuff to stay in place definitely get yourself some of those um, the next thing that I'm going to talk about is not really like an authentic um, vintage thing but it is really good for longevity and for the contemporary girl who wants a vintage look all day but doesn't have the time to be doing touch ups uh, get yourself some of these fantastic long stay velvet lipsticks that are everywhere these days um, so I have some favorite brands they're all cruelty free and vegan um, 
My number one favourite is Jeffree Star. You can see that. Um, I'll try and get it close enough you can actually see. This is Anna Nicole. Um, I have tried to get the red colour, but it's so popular that like, it's never in stock. Um, but this is like an this is an orangey red, like a people call it a Marilyn colour, which is funny because Marilyn didn't wear an orangey red at all. But um, what people term a Marilyn colour, I guess, is Anna Nicole. Um, and Jeffree Star, in terms of the texture in your lips and the staying power, I'd say is the best out of um, this type of lipstick. Um, second best a little bit controversial at the moment but I still think they make a great product and I hope um, the rumours about them are wrong but we'll see uh, is Lime Crime. This colour is Wicked. Um, this is great again great staying powder, power, um, good texture but it does dry your lips out a little bit so um, just be aware of that. It's not great for days when you've got already got dry lips or it's like chap, chapped lip kind of weather which it is at the moment in Melbourne but it is a great product and great colours. Um, and then my new favourite, these are a little bit um, softer, they're not as long wearing because the product doesn't quite have the same staying powder power, but it doesn't dry your lips out, so you know you kind of balance it out that way. Um, but great colours is Kat Von D's range, and her range of makeup in general is really good. Um, the first colour and the colour that I'm wearing right now is Outlaw. This one is so hard to get that this is actually a little like tester size that I got in a trial kit of hers um, because literally when you go to Sephora because we have one store in Melbourne it's been massacred like even her testers have been stolen so um, yeah <laughs> I looked long and hard for that and then the other one and this has become an absolute staple for me for everyday wear particularly when I'm supposed to be wearing a natural look for work um, my version of natural is just to do all my pinup makeup as normal obviously to do my eye brows and then whack this on instead of red so it feels like I almost try to be a normal person um, <laughs> but this is the color Lolita which is another one that always runs out because it's very popular with her and it's it's kind of a, a deep a deep nude color um, that's gorgeous I really like that it's got a bit of a brownish tinge to it as well so it's got a bit of an almost retro kind of 90s feel to it um, but I love it, great, great products. You should definitely get them because um, they work really well and have longevity. Um, now this next thing is relevant to the lippies and I still use this when I use a long stay lippy um, and that is getting a good quality lip liner. And when I say good quality, I don't mean the, the crayon itself or the liner itself, I mean not getting a mechanical lip liner because that is really popular at the moment. Like every brand seems to be switching over from their perfectly good pencils to mechanical lip liners and they do not give you a really sharp, even finish and it's very hard to control your lines with them. Um, so find yourself some proper pencil lip liners. Um, they don't need to be expensive. This is Astralis, um, I think it was $9. But you can get a really sharp tip on it, get yourself a sharpener, sharpen it up and then you can be very very precise about your lips and a lip liner will help stop your lipstick bleeding over the day. So it's it's well worth, outline your lips, colour your full lip in and then put your colour over the top. You'll find you have a much more authentic look because the 40s and 50s was very much about perfection and precision when it came to your makeup. Um, and your lippy will last longer throughout the day. Some days I only put lip liner on, I don't even bother putting lipstick on if I'm feeling lazy. I would always do it that way around rather than just putting a lippy on because it always turns out badly if I just do that. And last but not least, every, every vintage girl should have some liquid liner and I am obsessed with the ones that already have the pointy felt tip. This is Kat Von D's tattoo liner. Um, the felt tip with the point on it just helps you finish off your cat's eye so much more quickly and easily than any other brush products. Um, I mean, there's, don't get me wrong, those products are great, but if you're in a hurry and you want to do this look every day, this just makes life so much easier. Um, and this particular product has great staying power. I have um, oily skin and I get oily eyelids, and my product often ends up on the top part of my eyelid, no matter if I use um, a primer on my eyelid or if I use a finishing makeup spray, it still ends up there. This doesn't do that, um, which is why I love it so much. So I highly recommend that. Um, and that's it basically. I mean there there's obviously other items that are great to have and you'll spot those in my other tutorials, but 
these are the absolute essentials and when you do YouTube tutorials if you're new to the kind of vintage scene and you're looking at those and trying out new makeup styles and hairstyles you will find these products come up over and over and over again and it is well worth investing in them um, you can't really go wrong so uh, yeah consider going and have a look at that if you have any questions or you want some like recommendations on brands I mean I've showed you what I've got but um, if you ask me about other ones and I've heard about them or I've heard good things I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have so pop comments in the comments box below and subscribe for more vintage videos thanks